Uh, this is Swati Sathe. I'm a neurologist and the medical director for CHDI Management and CHDI Foundation. CHDI Foundation is a nonprofit biomedical research organization dedicated to research in Huntington disease. The mission of the organization is to accelerate drug development and curative therapies for Huntington disease through every avenue possible, whether it is preclinical, translational, or clinical. Endol HD was implemented in 2012, and we have eight years worth of uh, data on about 23,000 participants of um, participants in the study who are uh, Huntington disease gene expansion carriers as well as controls. Uh, this uh, very large curated and monitored data set is available for download uh, for any investigator or researcher uh, who affiliated with a um, institution and willing to sign the data user agreement. This data set may be uh, a very useful resource for medical students, neurology residents, neurology fellows, and young investigators uh, who are trying to hone their skills in uh, data analyses or uh, analyses of a clinical data set. Uh, and we would really like to encourage the entire neurology community uh, to take advantage of this data, data set and um, utilizes as much as possible. And I'll go over a little bit about the uh, study. So the study was uh, started in 2012. Uh, it was envisioned to be a large multimodal collaborative platform for integrated clinical research. And indeed, it, that is what it has turned out to be. So there are two aspects. There is the Enroll HD platform, which provides the infrastructure for the entire study. Uh, these are the highlights of this platform. Uh, it's a, it has an integrated uh, electronic uh, recording system and a database. It has a in detail site monitoring and site training system. It has standardized informed consent set site contracts so that uh, we can carry out the entire study in a similar manner across the world. Um, and it has a glo global management uh, and governance unit that oversees the entire study. And the Enroll HD as a study itself is a prospective longitudinal observational study that is one of the aspects of the entire platform. Um, the way the study is conducted uh, is that it, it involves uh, recruitment of participants who have Huntington disease and they're usually called HDGEX, HDGEC, that is Huntington disease gene expansion carriers, uh, as well as controls. Now, Participants may have had done their test prior to coming into the study and know their uh, Huntington disease gene status. That is okay. They, whether their controls are unaffected, both are enrolled. There are some uh, participants who are at risk of Huntington disease because of family history, but they have chosen not to get tested for the disease. Those participants are welcome as well. Uh, there is an annual visit that comprises of uh, history uh, taking the patient's uh, family history, which is optional, and then some standardized assessments. The most common uh, standardized assessment for Huntington disease is the United, uh, United Huntington Disease Rating Scale, that is UHDRS, and that is um, uh, the patient is assessed using the UHDRS every year. And there are additional assessments for psychological and cognitive uh, components. There is a um, blood draw at each um, visit, which is again optional, but that goes to a biorepository and we have a biorepository of cells. The patient, there is a research genetic testing conducted to confirm the HD gene status. However, those results are used only for uh, research purposes and not returned to the patient or the site. And this entire study uh, over the past uh, eight years, I should say, has led to this kind of a global coverage. So there are 169 sites across four continents. Uh, the periodic data set was released in December of 2018. Another one is anticipated uh, in the next six to eight months. Uh, here it just shows the four continents involved and the number of patients uh, by the uh, periodic data set of uh, December 2018, uh, the number of participants enrolled in each continent um, from, from about 10,000 in Europe to about 500 in Australia. And the data cut, the, the, the data was not released in January 1st of 2020. There was a data cut just to see the enrollment. 
and there are 23,047 participants enrolled in Enroll HD. As we said, these are Huntington disease gene expansion carriers as well as controls. Uh, there is a total of 61,000 uh, visits with over 13 million data points collected in Enroll HD uh, regarding these participants. Now, most of the data that we are showing is from the data card of 2018 because we don't have the new data cut yet. Um, as we said, the manifest patients are the one uh, who, in the clinician's opinion, uh, have uh, signs and symptoms conclusive of Huntington disease. Um, and there are about 9,000 of those, 3,000 of pre-manifest, uh, about 2,000 who are genotype negative, and uh, about 1,800 of family control. So that's the composition of the um, cohort at this time. Uh, this is the age distribution with the average age just above 50 years. And uh, we have uh, about 7,000 or 6,700 women and 8,500 men uh, in the study. So if we look at it from the disease stage perspective, then um, there's a Schulzen and Fahn staging that is used to uh, stage only the manifest patients because this is a functional stage, functional scale. And we believe that the pre-manifest uh, subjects do not have any functional decline. The functional decline only occurs after motor onset of the disease. And the stage one to stage five goes through uh, mild disability to being five, five being bed bound state um, or completely dependent on uh, others for uh, activities of daily living. And this is about the distribution of the participants at different uh, stages of the disease. There is a move now uh, within Enroll HD to enroll more pre-manifest participants and we'll go over why that the reason is. Uh, but over the past two years, we have really been encouraging sites to en enroll more and more pre-manifest patients. So what kind of data do we generate? As we said, there is a, a CAG length testing, which can be done from the local diagnostic lab, but we also perform it for research purposes. We have done the genome-wide um, uh, uh, association studies to look at genetic modifiers of these diseases. We have biosamples in a number of these patients. Um, and then we collect the comorbidities, uh, medication history, uh, uh, you know, nutritional supplement history, all of that that goes into a normal history taking uh, and, uh, for any patient or any participant. Uh, we have reportable events uh, in Enroll, which are uh, either attempted suicide or suicidal ideation, completed suicide, hospitalization. Um, those are the reportable events uh, in Enroll HD. And then at, with respect to the uh, clinical data that is collected or the assessment data that is collected, these are all the scales uh, that are collected um, from these patients and I will not enumerate all of them, uh, but the blue, the green and orange uh, bars show uh, how many participants have done it and at how many visits they have been performed. As you can see that there is a wealth of data here uh, that encompasses patient, Huntington patients at all stages, all ages, um, across all uh, continents. And this is really a very rich data set for any kind of data analysis. So this data is very strictly monitored. Uh, great care is taken to make sure that there is no risk of participant identification. There is coding and recoding uh, of the data. Uh, data monitoring occurs remotely as well as on site. Uh, remote monitoring usually looks at the discrepancies, uh, the numerical dis discrepancies or improbable values and, in, and queries are sent back to the site uh, to get them clarified. Uh, source data monitoring occurs depending on how big the site is and how many patients are enrolled, there may be several visits a year or one or two visits a year for source data verification. The periodic data set, as we said, is released around every one to two years, uh, with 80% with of the variables are released. Variables that are thought to increase the risk of uh, participant identification are not released with the periodic data set. The periodic data set can be downloaded by uh, anybody as long as they willing to provide their institutional affiliation and sign uh, a data user agreement. They have to provide information as to what is the proposed or really intended use of this data. Uh, if there are specific variables that a researcher requests and they're not available in the uh, data set, they can make a special SPS request for that data. We have a scientific oversight committee that reviews the request and decides if the data can be released or not. Uh, the PDS score has been downloaded around 230 times but we do certainly hope that it is downloaded way more than this. Uh, in fact, it may be a great resource for uh, neurology residents, neurology fellows, or young investigators 
to uh, gain access to this very rich data set, uh, conduct HD research and learn some data analytic skills uh, with the use of this data. Some assistance with respect to that uh, may also be available through the Enroll uh, platform, and there are uh, provisions for that as well, depending you know, for case by case basis. Uh, we really encourage uh, all the investigators, researchers out there to take a look at the data set, download the data set, and um, ask us for help if there is any required. The HD platform, when it was originally designed, also had the objective of supporting clinical trials. Um, and as you can see, because of this um, you know, large patient population, it is really um, easy for um, the Enroll platform to uh, scan through the uh, cohort and help with recruitment, identify participants with specific characteristics that may meet the inclusion and exclusion criteria of any particular uh, clinical study or identify sites that are um, trained and certified uh, to be assessors for uh, UHDRS or those, have the, those who have the uh, infrastructure to conduct uh, clinical trials. We have a certification program for, for any site to be a certified site for HD research. Uh, and these are all the uh, studies that the Enroll platform currently supports. Uh, which range from imaging studies, observational studies, exercise studies to clinical trials. Uh, we have a clinical trial committee that um, looks at requests from different uh, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, the request may be pertaining to a particular study design or a particular um, outcome assessment uh, and so on. Uh, we have uh, external collaborators who review uh, these issues and provide uh, guidance to the companies or the investigators uh, for future steps. Uh, we would really like to acknowledge uh, the participants in the study and their families who give their valuable time and resources every year uh, to uh, visit the sites and provide the information. All the study sites and the personnel at the study sites, the advocacy groups, CHDI Foundation, and Enroll staff, it's really a very collective effort by a number of people on this front. Uh, I have listed the website for Enroll HD here where you could visit to ask questions or gain more information. Uh, thank you very much.